Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, we are continuing talking about vectors and operations in vectors. Um, so far, we have learned about addition of vectors, which produce the vector, uh, multiplication of a vector by a constant, which is also produces the vector. Um, then we um, were introduced to um, a pro uh, 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 an operation which produces a scalar. So we have two vectors and an operation which is called a scalar product or dot product that produces just a number, real number. And ob obviously we investigated certain properties of this operation. Um, now we will talk about another operation which is also named product. So there was a scalar product and the result of the scalar product is a scalar. Now we will talk about vector product, and the result of the vector product is a vector. So two vectors are engaged in this operation, which is called vector product, or cross product, and the result is a vector. There is one very important um, distinction. Other operations, like addition, uh, multiplication by number, or scalar product, um, were actually um, defined for uh, one-dimensional, two-dimensional, three-dimensional vectors and actually can be expanded to any n-dimensional vectors. Vector product is a specific operation which is defined only on three-dimensional vectors, by definition. Now, why such an interesting situation? Well, primarily because the vector product is an operation which uh, was invented for purposes of physics. Now, we live in a three-dimensional world, and um, the operation on uh, vectors in three-dimensional space, where the vectors represent certain physical um, characteristics of, of, of our space, that, that was actually the fundamental um, reason for introducing this operation of vector product. And I will just very briefly mention um, one of physical um, uh, th th physical characteristic of this particular operation. Um, if you can imagine a magnet which has north and south poles. So there are like magnetic forces which are in between these two poles. Now you can feel these magnetic forces if you will put some um, ferromagnetic like uh, piece of iron for instance it will gravitate towards one of these two uh, poles. Now here is another interesting story. Uh, if you have an electric current going this way somehow Let's say you have a metal rod and you have an electricity which is moving. Let's say we are connecting this to some kind of a battery, right? So there is an electricity which is circulating along this metal rod. So we have a metal rod where electricity is going on and then we have the forces of magnetic uh, origin and they are perpendicular to each other. Then the experiment shows that there is a certain force which acts on this road and it's perpendicular to the surface. So if everything is going on in the surface of this whiteboard, then the force is perpendicular to the whiteboard. So this metal road would, would, would actually act upon towards either that way or this way, depending on the direction of the magnetic forces and, uh, and electricity. If you change the polarity, the uh, this, this force will change the sign. So if it was pushing that way, then changing polarity will uh, result in pushing it this way. If you change the poles, north and south, also the direction will be changed. So we have this situation when you have two different vectors, one vector representing the car electric current, another vector representing magnetic current. Then there is a third vector, the force, which results in some interaction between these things. So that was the reason actually why vector product was invented. I mean this and some other 
physical um, experiments which, which, which were done. So there was some kind of a necessity for uh, mathematicians to um, basically introduce this abstract, now we're talking about abstract, op abstract operation, which is called vector product. Um, but you have to understand that the roots of that were in physics. Now we will talk about the vector product as actually uh, a, a mathematical um, object. However, we will always keep in mind that there are some physical foundations which this mathematical um, apparatus should actually represent. All right. Now, let's think about we are talking about two vectors acting in certain plane, and the result is the vector which is perpendicular to this plane, right? So that, that's, the, that's the basic of that physical experiment. Um, so, when we were talking about um, the vector product, we're talking about two three-dimensional vectors, and operation of vector product produces a third three-dimensional vector. Now, to define this vector, we have to define its magnitude and its direction, right? Okay, so magnitude and um, direction. Let's think about um, this experiment again. Um, if I will change the position of my metal road where electricity is going on from perpendicular to the magnetic lines to a parallel ones, the experiment shows that there will be no um, force generated. And actually the force depends on this angle. So if magnetic force is going this way and electricity going this way, now if I will start changing the direction of the road, turning it a little bit, then the force will be diminishing more and more down to zero when instead of this direction I will have parallel to, uh, to magnetic, field, the magnetic field. So, but I would like to say that this vector product is somehow depends uh, on collinearity of, of these two vectors. So, the more collinear they are, the less magnitude of the result you should expect. By the way, this is opposite to a scalar product. Because in the scalar product case, the collinear vectors have the, the, the biggest result, the largest result, if you scalarly multiply them. Why? Because it's magnitude of one times magnitude of another times cosine of an angle between them. And the cosine in this case is zero, so the cosine, uh, the angle is zero, so cosine is one. So when they are collinear, the amplitude, the, the, the magnitude of this uh, result is the biggest. In this case, case of the uh, vector product, is just the opposite. So when they are collinear, the result is zero. When they are perpendicular, the result is maximum. That's what experiment shows. So instead of using the cosine for scalar multiplication to basically measure the collinearity, we will use the sine. And that's what's very um, natural to use. Um, so what I would like to say is that the magnitude of um, the vector product of these two things actually is naturally vector product is naturally dependent on sign between their directions. And obviously it depends on their magnitudes. Um, themselves. So that's, uh, I should say, this. The magnitude of their vector product is equal to the product of their magnitudes and the absolute value of sine of the angle between them. So this is the definition of the magnitude of this vector. Now, let's talk about direction. Well, first of all, I did tell you that the force is always perpendicular to this plane. So I can always say 
that no matter what vectors a and b are, the result of their vector product is perpendicular to them both. So if you have one vector a and let's say another vector b, now let's imagine that I'm drawing everything in the three-dimensional. Uh, so the result would be perpendicular to both, considering that they are A and B are in this plane, so to speak, and um, A cross B is perpendicular to the plane, which means it's perpendicular to this and it's perpendicular and it's perpendicular to this, to both. So if you have two vectors, no matter how you position, you can always consider a plane which they define. Two vectors always define the plane. Now their vector product is perpendicular to this plane. So the line is defined um, absolutely without any problems. Now the magnitude I also defined. So the only thing which is not defined is direction, this way or that way along this line. So again, we have two vectors. They they define they define the plane. Now this is a perpendicular to the plane, which means it's perpendicular to this and perpendicular to this and perpendicular to any other vector which is on this plane. Now the magnitude is defined, so it's only the direction which we have to define, and we will talk about this in a second. Okay, let me wipe out this. Don't need this anymore. And let's talk about direction. So this is one vector A, this is one vector B, and this is A cross B. Now, this is an angle. Now, here is uh, the rule. And again, this is a rule which is a definition. There is no, like, some kind of physical sense in it. It's just a definition. We have to define somehow the direction of this vector. If we know the line, it's within, and we know its magnitude, so it's only the direction, like upwards or downwards, or whatever you want to call these two directions. Okay, here is the rule. Um, if you have to move from vector A to vector B within this particular plane, which these two vectors define. So if you have, if this is your A and this is your B, this is the plane, so the direction from A to B. And we're always talking about the smaller angle, not this one, this smaller angle. So if you have two vectors, we always can talk about the plane they belong to and the uh, angle from which we can move from one uh, vector, which is the first one in this case, A, this is A, to the second one, which is B. So we move this way. Now, this is the rule which is called right-hand rule. Imagine you are opening a bottle of wine, you have this uh, corkscrew, and you are moving it this way and it goes down, right? So. Let's imagine that you have to move from this A uh, vector to B angle in the same direction you are moving the screw. So if you're moving um, the, the, the cork screw, for instance, you have to move it in this particular direction, and uh, your direction of the tip of the cork screw this way, right? So that's the direction which is, by definition, is the direction of their um, vector product. So if this is A and this is B, then this is the direction of the uh, of their vector product. So from A to B, if you move to certain direction, then you can imagine you do it with a corkscrew, and that's the direction where the tip of the corkscrew is moving, right? Another way of viewing of viewing the thing is, if you have a plane, let's say this is a plane doesn't really matter, which defines these two vectors. Now, 
this is the line which is perpendicular. So you can view this plane from underneath or from above, right? So which side to choose? Well, you have to choose the side from which the direction of the angle is counterclockwise. So if you look from this, from the below, it will be counterclockwise, which is the right one. Because if you move from here to here, you go downwards. Now, if you if you look from the up, um, from, from the upper side above the above this plane, if this plane is considered to be horizontal and this is above, now you see that the movement from here to here, from A to B, is clockwise, which is a negative direction. If you remember when you are changing the the angle, the positive direction is always counterclockwise. So this is not the side the side uh, of, of the plane where the vector is directed. It's always towards the side from which the direction is counterclockwise, the positive direction. So this is the rule. So you can talk about the right hand screw or uh, a cork screw, or you can uh, talk about uh, direction of the movement from underneath or from the above the plane which contain these two vectors, whatever the definition is, it's always defined and it's always the same. So in this particular case, if you consider the angle between A and B as, as basically from direction from A to B is this way, then my proper direction of the product should actually be down. If, however, this is A and this is B, then the direction is this way from A to B, and then this would be direction of the cross product. So we know the magnitude of the product, of the cross product of two vectors. And we know the line along which this result, this uh, vector product is supposed to be positioned. It's perpendicular to both vectors. And we also know both are right angle. And uh, also we know how to choose the direction on this line Direction depends on the right-hand rule. Basically, that's what defines the vector product. So the vector product is completely defined by, by all these characteristics. It's one three-dimensional vector multiplied by another three-dimensional vector. The result is yet another three-dimensional vector. That's why it's called vector product. Now, it's uh, notation. Uh, a little cross, that's why it's called sometimes cross product. And we know how to basically uh, find the result of this uh, operation, this vector product. Now let's talk about properties. So the vector product obviously has certain properties. We learned about scalar uh, product and its properties, now we're learning about vector product and its properties. All right, let's just go one by one. First property, if you multiply any vector by no vector, vector product would be, well, a vector, right? But it's a no vector, which, is, which has zero lengths. Why? Because the magnitude of this vector is the product of the magnitudes and the sign between them. Now, the, the magnitude of zero, no vector is, is zero. So that's why the magnitude of this vector is zero, so it's a no vector which doesn't really have any direction, so it doesn't really matter to talk about. What's interesting is the next one. Let's think about this. Well, magnitude is fine. It's magnitude of this times magnitude of this. Length of this vector times length of this vector. But what's the sign of the angle between them? Well, the angle between them is zero because it's the same vector. So the sign is zero. So the result is also a vector which has a zero length, which is a null vector. This is a little bit more unusual, I would say. 
Because if you remember, for instance, in case of a scalar product, you multiply these two things as a, 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 in the scalar product mode. And you basically have a double length. Because the cosine of an angle of 0 is 1. So that's the difference. That's a very interesting property. So the result of the vector product of a vector by itself is um, equal to 0. And it corresponds to the physical experiment which we're talking about. Because if I put my These are magnetic forces. If I put my electric rod, a metal rod with electric current parallel, there will be no force. That's what the experiment actually shows. So if, I, um, if, if, if uh, one vector is parallel to another vector, their vector product, which actually is representing the force, which is results in this experiment, is zero. But as soon as I start turning this, it will actually be growing. And uh, the formula, again, it was probably experimentally proven. The formula, the formula would be um, that the force depends on both um, strengths of magnetic force and the electric current and the sign of the angle between these directions, between directions of the magnetic current and directions of the electric current. And if it's zero, well, then the result is zero. But if it's 90 degrees, like here, if my conductor is this way, this metal road, then the, the strength of that force which acts in this direction, uh, perpendicular to this plane, is the maximum. So that's an interesting property, which is very peculiar for vector product. And again, it corresponds to physical characteristics. Now, what's another important property is, we all know about commutative law, right? Like this is, uh, scalar product is commutative. Why? Because it's um, uh, A times B times cosine, and cosine is a, uh, an even function. It doesn't depend on, on the direction of the angle. But now, this actually is vector, the, the length of this thing is equal to uh, length of this times length of this times sine. So the sine is, a, is an odd function. It changes the direction if you, it, it changes the sine if you change the direction of the angle. So this is called anti-commutative law. Now the anti-commutative law is very important in this particular case. Um, why, why is it anti-commutative uh, if you will just look at this particular picture? Well, if you move from A to B, then your right hand uh, rule says you go this way, right? So that's the direction. If you move from B to A, now B is the first, end, the first vector and A is the second vector. You have to move this way, and it goes down. So the magnitude would be the same, but the direction of the vector would be opposite. That's why this minus uh, stands here. All right. Next. Next property is very interesting as well. Let me just draw a little different picture. Now my A and B vectors will lie in the plane of the white board, right? This is A, this is B. Okay? Now, their vector product would be lying along this line. Now, if you move from A to B, then this is a counterclockwise. Therefore, if my observer sits here on this side of the of the of the whiteboard, it's positive direction. So the vector actually directed this way, from the whiteboard towards me. 
Okay, now, what is now? This is phi. I meant, I meant absolute value. Well, let's just think about it. This is the length of this. This is length of that vector. Now, which is, let's say, b times sine of phi? Well, obviously, this is an altitude of this parallelogram, right? So, if you build a parallelogram on these two vectors by basically uh, taking the end point of one vector and drawing the line parallel to another, and same thing here, from the end point parallel to another. You get a parallelogram. And the area of this parallelogram is equal to base times altitude. And the altitude is exactly b times sine of phi, and the base is a. So the vector product uh, is a vector, but its uh, length of this vector is equal to the area of the parallelogram, which is built on these two um, initial vectors. So that's just an interesting property, which we will use in another three-dimensional uh, problem later on. OK. Now, what else is interesting? Well, next is quite obvious uh, associativity towards multiplication by a constant. So if you have a vector a and b, you multiply a by a constant. It's a scalar. It's just a number. And then you cross multiply by vector b. It's the same thing as if this constant is multiplied by vector product of a and b. And similarly, if the constant is multiplied by b, it will be exactly the same thing. Now, how can that be um, proven? I mean, before, all these little properties I, I proved quite easily. Well, actually, this is not difficult as well. Let's just consider for a second that k is positive, which means it doesn't change the direction of the a. Well, if it doesn't change the direction, it changes only the lengths. Now, length of this vector is the length of this times the length of this times sine of this. Well, absolute value, actually. Now, the length of this guy is absolute value of k times the length of this guy, which is this and absolute value of sine. Now, the length of the Ka is exactly the same as absolute value of K times A. So that's why the length is exactly the same. Fine. The length is the same. We can find out this. Now, the line along which the product actually is would also, would also be exactly the same. Why? Because multiplication by a positive constant doesn't really change the direction. So Ka, if this is A, this is B, then this is Ka, right? So direction is exactly the same. So the plane which, define, which is defined by these two vectors a and b, or k, a, and b, exactly the same. So the perpendicular towards this plane line is also the same. So magnitude is the same. The line along which the vector product is the same. So only direction we actually talk about. But again, if k is positive, k doesn't really change the direction of the a, and the direction of the angle from a to b is exactly the same as from k, a, to b. So for positive k, it's obviously uh, the same direction. Now, for negative k, 
you don't need this anymore, right? Now, what if k is negative? But here's what happens here. To change the direction of this to the opposite, right? Which means instead of this, ka would be here for negative k, right? Now, if angle used to be this, now angle is this one. We are talking about a smaller angle from the beginning, from the first vector towards the second, which is changing the direction, obviously. If this is phi, this is 180 minus phi. The sine of, my, the sine of phi is exactly the same as sine of 180 minus phi minus phi. But the direction is different. And since the direction is different, it doesn't change the magnitude because the sign is exactly the same. But it does change the sign. So this one is changing to the negative. That's why this one is changing to the negative. And that's, that's exactly what k does. k is negative right now, right? So whatever used to be the sign of a times b, now it changes to the opposite. And same thing in, in, in this case. So that's a little bit longer proof, but it's still an easy one. Now let's talk about another property, a very interesting property. Imagine that we have a Cartesian system of coordinates. Or Euclidean system of coordinates, Euclidean space, Cartesian system of coordinates, whatever. Now, we have unit vectors which have lengths 1 and directed along the three axes. So, I is a unit vector along x. J is a unit vector along y, and, and K is a unit vector along z. Now, what's interesting about these angles? Well, number one, they all have the lengths of 1, because these are unit vectors, by definition. That's number one. Number two, they are mutually perpendicular to each other. So I is perpendicular to J, J is perpendicular to K, and K is perpendicular to I. Right? It's three-dimensional space. Let me use my. These are unit vectors. I, J, K. So they're all of length one and they all are perpendicular to each other. Now, let's talk about vector product. Let's say I times J. Well, the angle is 90 degree, so the sine is equal to 1, right? The magnitude, therefore, is equal to 1. Magnitude of 1 times magnitude of another times sine of the angle. And direction of the angle, look, from I to J, it's from here to here, right? So, if we are talking about a corkscrew, we go this way, which means it goes up. So, we have basically this particular vector k, which is exactly positioned on the perpendicular to the whole plane where i and j are. It has the length 1, which these are supposed to produce uh, as, as a vector product. And direction is right. It's upwards, right? So. What I want to say is that I times J equals K. Isn't that interesting? So vector product is producing a, a result. If you multiply a, uh, I times J, these two unit vectors, you will get K. Now, very similarly, if you multiply J by K, you get I. Go back to my three markers. This is J, this is K, 
So you go from J to K, which means from here you are doing this kind of a turn, and obviously this is a direction, and it's perpendicular to these two. So that's what this is. Mean. And finally, K times I gives J. K times I gives J. Now, obviously, if you change the order, so instead of I times J, you have J times uh, I, you will get minus K, right? So, because the vector product is anti-commutative, anti-commutative, right? So, these are properties of unit vectors along the axis of coordinates in Euclidean space. That's a very interesting property. And the final property which I would like to talk about, but very briefly, is distributive law. You obviously expect the distributive law. So if you have a vector product of sum of two vectors and the third one, then it's the same if you add the vector product of the first one by the third and the second one by the third. Well, this is a true property. To prove it is not so trivial, and I will delay it until the next lecture. Uh, however, as a property, I would like to mention it in this lecture, and this will be the, uh, the, the very um, uh, the, the very end, basically, of the properties which I was going to talk. This is the last property I, I wanted to discuss today. So the distributive law is working as well. Well, now, the vector product, um, I would like to mention again that the vector product is actually the result of some physical experimentation and development of the physics. Mathematicians basically took it under their wing and started to uh, research, investigate, prove theorems, etc., etc. So it, 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 it grew into a mathematical um, topic. Um, however, again, do not forget that the basis is over there. Now, is it is it right to call it vector product, and why this particular operation? Well, yes, obviously it has certain physical meaning, and we have to research it. But at the same time. There is nothing which prohibits us to invent a completely different vector product. I don't want to actually call it vector product. Product of two vectors. Let's put this multiplication of two vectors. Let's say you have vector in coordinate system, one and another. Now their sum, if you remember, was this. Sum of two vectors is a vector where you sum the coordinates. And it does make actually physical sense as well, when you have two forces, for instance, and you have the result of this. Now, why don't we de define multiplication of two vectors as this? As a vector with two coordinates. It's not, I'm not putting plus in between. The plus means it's a scalar product. I'm actually putting as a comma here. So it's two coordinates. I, I just multiply them. I mean, why can't we do this? Well, we can, quite frankly. There is nothing wrong with this. And this operation would probably satisfy lots of very useful um, principles, like multiplication by zero, uh, by null vector would be uh, null vector multiplication by one, one, for instance. If this is one, one, then the result will be the same as before. Um, uh, commutative law obviously works. Uh, associative law works. By the way, associative work, uh, law is not working. If you multiply by third vector cross by C, there is no associativity, uh, no associativity there. But in this case, you will have. So it kind of um, defines a, a, a nice operation. But for whatever reason, it was not needed for any practical purposes. And Mathematicians basically ignored it. I mean, yes, we can do something like this, but nobody's interested, quite frankly. But many people are interested in the vector product because it has a, a, a true application in physics. All right, so uh, I don't want you to, to think about vector product as, as something strange. 
unusual or whatever. I, I, I always want you to think about vector product as a mathematical reflection of something which exists in the physical world. Now, with this thought in mind, let me finish this particular lecture. I do suggest you to read notes for this lecture again. It's like a textbook, basically. It's all in unizor.com. And um, next lecture will be uh, actually about this distributive law because it has a non-trivial uh, proof in this particular presentation kind of thing. All right, that's it for today. Thanks very much, and good luck.